Good afternoon. Good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to the Ways to Save webinar series hosted by the South African Savings Institute. My name is Gerald Mwandiambira, and I'm the CEO of the South African Savings Institute. And I'd like to welcome you onto this webinar for this afternoon. Yes, there's a lot of things happening in our country right now, but this webinar will be discussing something that's also very topical. Um, just to give you a brief background of the South African Savings Institute, if it's your first time encountering us. SASI was founded in 2001, and we've been going for 20 years. And our main function is to try and foster and encourage a culture of saving in South Africa. We have three primary pillars. The first one, which is to do research, talk about savings and find out how we can save better act as advocates for both the consumers, business and government in terms of finding better ways to save and instruments we can use to save, such as the tax-free savings accounts. And finally, our other role is that of consumer education. And this is why we have July Savings Month, which we started in 2008. And it's become recognized by many and all South Africans as a month in which we talk about savings. This year, our theme is simply ways saving in your language saving in your language is about us starting a conversation around money investments and saving in vernacular languages 
as well as identifying ourselves as individuals who are able to save on our own. This afternoon, we have three powerful panelists who are going to share their insights and their knowledge. If you missed out on the first webinar last week, we spoke to the youth and how the youth can save and how NASPAS is helping the youth of South Africa to save as a principal funder. This afternoon, we're talking stock fails, the stock fail movement, the movement which took many children to school, the movement which still continues to feed many families and educates many families. We've got three fantastic guests who are coming through and I'll just give you a bit of background for each of our guests before we get going. Our first speaker who's coming up now is Palesa Lengolo, who's the author of Stockfells, How They Can Make Money Work For You. Palesa is a finance professional with 10 years experience in investments, banking, and accounting. Palesa is currently, um, sorry, lost my screen. Pal Palesa holds qualifications in financial information systems, accounting science, and is a postgraduate in business administration. Palesa was named in the Mail and Guardian top 200 young people, young South Africans in 2020 under the category of education for the work she does mainly around Stockwells. She is the author of a book called Stockwells, How They Can Make Money Work For You, published by Penguin Random House in South Africa. The book has won an award for financial empowerment in 2020, African Authors Awards. She's passionate about investor and financial literacy education, especially for ordinary people and Stockfell societies and clubs. As, and as a financial educator, she was one of the finalist nominees for women in education category at the Women of Stature Awards 2019. She's assisted a lot of Stockfells to, finan to financial and investment wellness. And she's a Stockfeller herself. She believes and practices the Stockfell way of life. Palesa joins the Ways to Save webinar to talk about the ongoing evolution of Stockfells, how they're adjusting to today's world and where they're going in the future. And hopefully she will contribute to all of us knowing a little bit more about what we can do with our Stockfell. Palesa, the floor is open and over to you. Muted, muted, muted. Unmute, Palisa. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. <laughs> I, I can't believe we still do that. Um, let me just share my screen. Great. Uh, let's start. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jared, for that. Thank you so much to Sassy and Absa. And thank you so much for everybody that is uh, joining us uh, today. Um, I'm just going to be talking around the evolution of Stockfells, uh, just a few points around what Stockfells are doing now. And what we foresee them doing right now is important financial models. As Gerard had said, Kitali Dumedi Sahantle formerly, Naki Palesawa Halingolo, Kimosebetsi Wadi Chelete, Limongoli Wabuka, who try and give stock fells how they can make your money work for you. Hubuli can chelete mona na kesebe di sa di stock fella ha holo, handle and like I'll see what is stock fella. Kimo stock fella, impa he and niti ibiling tsa zenaling tselo pili. What uh, we really need to concentrate on today is um, how can these stock fails, how have they evolved from what they were to currently they are. That is stock fails are still the proudly South African way of alternative saving. And the current evolution of stock fails uh, due to people realizing the benefits and advantages of collaborating uh, financial skills with others and uh, how to use this dynamic financial model in a more progressive way um, than it was used back in the day. That is the main uh, realization that is really causing this evolution that we are seeing right now around stock fail around stock fails. And contrary to the belief that stock fails are for low LSMs, only for women, the evolution actually shows that it's the opposite of that right now. There is more 
uh, professionals in Stockfields, there's entrepreneurs in, the, in, in Stockfields. We see more middle class um, in Stockfields and higher SLM and mixed with men, even in leading roles within these um, Stockfields uh, that are being so progressive in this evolution. And another thing is that Stockfields have evolved from just being communities of um, assisting each other, of buying groceries or bearing each other, or sharing payouts at the end of the year, to being more investment focused, to being more long-term focused than short-term, uh, with the Stockfell industry showing an increase, um, which with, with the research that shows an increase in Stockfells going into investments and, the, and not just in investments, but investment that really are impacting our economy um, in a positive manner, uh, instead of being just uh, uh, consumers. So this current evolution of stock files, really, um, uh, we're seeing them very formalizing into companies, into trusts, into cooperatives, and investing shares, property, retail. Um, I've got a few examples uh, that are that I've really been uh, uh, looking at, it, uh, having a close eye on, and this is really showing the proof that we are really evolving in this stockfell industry. Um, so while still raising capital using the stockfell uh, uh, model, most formalized stockfells are entering into these key sectors uh, that. I've mentioned the food industry in the form of um, farm stock fills, or also known as crowd farming, the housing and property uh, investments in the form of property stock fills. They also enter in the retail industry in the form of franchise stock fills. Um, I, I know a very good franchise stock fill that I'm part of the, uh, right now, and they have French two franchise stores already under their belt. So stock fills like are also getting to the financial in service industry actually in the form of CFIs or cooperative financial institutions. I write a lot about these um, in my book about this, these stock fells in terms of how we can evolve, uh, evolve them and how they can be uh, in, in a chapter called stock fells of the future. So it just shows that um, these, these financial models stock fells can be used to help um, communities in a bigger way and um, and also how they can leverage their collect their collective strength uh, in, in, the, in the way they can make their money work harder for them when they enter into these industries which is now proving that it is possible to enter into them. So part of the evolution also of stock fills is them going digital. So digitalizing stock fills in order to boost savings and investments and to make them more transparent um, with the likes of Stockfeller app, which is which been a very um, game changer in making all the above possible because of the transparency and the admin that have taken that have taken that have taken away from uh, the the stock files and making it much easier to really be this. Um, uh, uh, these revolutionary stock files that we are that we are seeing in this evolution right now so there's also a revolution around. So this revolution is not just a verbal thing that people keep on talking ab about. And um, these are real stock fells that some of them I know personally that are really uh, getting into these industries that, uh, that they were hard to get into as a stock fell before, but we're seeing this because of this evolution that they're entering these key sectors uh, that I have uh, mentioned above and they're, they, they are really taking strides. And these are genuine stock fells that are really progressive that are often um, overclouded by the, the challenges that this uh, that the Stockfell industry usually goes through year after year. So um, these is the evolution that I see currently happening in the in, in, in currently right now, but also is the evolution that I foresee even happening in the future, like Stockfells of the future are investment companies, are companies that um, that uh, are, are holding they are holding assets by formalizing. So it is, uh, it is uh, quite exciting and hopeful and in terms of how the industry is really uh, is in the direction that the industry is going through this um, evolution. So with that, 
with that said, um, it doesn't mean that uh, like just like any other industry, there are still challenges within all this greatness that is happening, uh, the evolution and the revolution. There are people that are still seeing loopholes where they are, can be able to scam people or even scam each other as stock fell members within uh, these uh, within the industry. And it is very important that while um, while we are going through this revolution and while we are applauding all these stock fells that are. are getting into these industries and investing in assets that will really create wealth for them as members and their children and generational wealth to also be aware uh, in terms of, um, of scams that are in the industry. And it is part anything financial, um, uh, you do need to, to, to also consider the risk management that comes with it. And mostly in the stock fell industry, it really does uh, uh, a lot will uh, be around scams and uh, pyramid schemes that often um, disguise themselves as, as stock fells, especially within groups. And as you know, scams are not a new thing in South Africa. And um, scammers keep presenting new concepts in terms of to impress uninformed, desperate, greedy, even curious uh, potential victims or investors. Um, so. These are just some of the most uh, popular things to look out for in order to assess if, uh, if a stock fell or an investment club or a stock fell movement um, uh, um, can be genuine or not. Is things like promises of, of overnight profits or income or return on investment, usually a red flag, and payouts that are made uh, to, to uh, from new investors, not from the returns or from profits. Um, you are being paid out from people joining this. Uh, that is usually also another red flag. Um, uh, they're relying solely on recruiting new members and no underlying product or asset while this recruitment is happening. Um, it's, it's another red flag. Um, uh, these are just three of them, but there are so many other um, red flags that you can look into when you're doing your research into joining a, 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 a stock fell or when you are assessing if a stock fell is a genuine uh, stock fell. So just uh, um, while being there, a stock fell should have a constitution and other legal binding agreements that outlines clearly among other businesses of the stock fell, of course, a, a, tra a transparent contribution structure, how members, members money is or will be out for and um, uh, that you can put in place as a risk management, join a stock fell or you are already in a stock fell that you are that you're not really uh, trusting if everything is genuine uh, there's a lot of them uh, there's a lot of red flags that there's a lot of things to look out for these are just the most popular ones that are that, that you can look into that's why it's so important uh, to be informed and and to take financial education seriously when you are a stock fella because you wouldn't be able to pick up some of these things if you don't have information So uh, I'm trying to go to my next slide. So it is very important to, to be stock fail savvy. And these are just some of the checklists uh, that, uh, that you can use as a stock feller or a potential stock feller uh, uh, a person that, or that wants to be in a stock fail, uh, that wants to be a stock fail member or to start a stock fail. Being stock fell savvy is like being financially savvy uh, because we are dealing with money, uh, but most importantly, we're also going to be dealing with people. So it's important that um, uh, everything is done above board and practically uh, so that members of the stock fell are also protected and you're protecting yourself. So to be stock fell financially, uh, or to be stock fell savvy, as I said, um, you also need to be financially savvy. So it's important that you get stock financial education, uh, to do your research, uh, to digitalize your stock fell. Um, uh, we are living in, in digital era, to consult with experts, to formalize your stock fell if you wish to, to be compliant and run a legitimate stock fell, uh, to avoid scams, to build trust and credibility, 
to continue to save, which is also raising capital, to work together, which is also to collaborate. So these are some of the checklists that you can check your stock fell against in order to be stock fell uh, savvy. So, um, Asikwa kwa ma stock fella, apa is stock fellin, masi seven zen is together, masi beni no buntu, sibambi sani, sikrine imalize tu, kwinda o apo imalize tu, zinga kwa zikona uko si seven zen. Yabo. Thank you very much, Palisa. And you know, um, you touched on many things which are very important um, for us all to, to recognize. And the fact is that stock fells are evolving. Um, stock fells, are living bodies. So we, we are seeing a lot of changes. You spoke about the stock fails, um, which are operating franchises. Uh, some are buying properties. Um, perhaps, you know, you know, you can also share in terms of your experience, um, how does a stock fail run a franchise? Aren't people fighting left, right and center every day? for Chelete, how is it working? What are the experiences? Um, from our current audience, 62% um, of our audience are part of a stock fell, um, of which most are doing investments, 43%, 19% groceries and 31 other. I'd like to know what that other is as well. So Palisa, in terms of the franchise, how is it organized? Uh, what, if I want 300 rand monthly, do I just go to the shop and collect from the till? So the most important thing is that when you're formalizing your stock fell, you are almost making it a business. So it has to be run professionally. Um, it, it, it has to be, there has to be a leadership in place. Uh, there has to be structures and processes in place to follow in order to be a running business. So you treat it like a business. Uh, for example, with the franchise stock fell, it needed to move from being just an ordinary stock fell to being uh, formalized into a cooperative. As we know, as a stock fell or as an, on its own, you, can, uh, you cannot buy an asset like a franchise store. So it needed to be uh, formalized into a legal entity, which in our case, we chose a cooperative because of the similarities already between a cooperative and a stock fell. So once we legalize that, we're able then to buy an asset of a store where everybody is a shareholder but there is a board in place. Uh, there's a management company in place that is uh, that is really um, assisting the whole process so that uh, not everybody, uh, just like when you have a share at Old Mutual, you can come in um, and say, uh, this is my company type of a thing. You have to be communicated with as a shareholder and, um, uh, and, and be kept and to into the know-how in terms of what's happening, but do not involved into the day-to-day process. So our shareholders also of the franchises uh, are also, uh, uh, we are working with. Okay, so we're losing you a bit, Palisa. So that model they are. Okay, so essentially what you're okay. saying, what you're saying is that stock files need to um, operate as businesses. Now that means you've now got CIPC, you've got accountants, you've got bankers, and definitely you always need your bankers. And as the South African Savings Institute, for us to be able to share these webinars, we have a banking partner and a sponsor who happens to be a bank, um, that's APSA. So we're going to get a bit of insight from that side of things because as the stock fell evolves, it means stock fells need more knowledge. And with more knowledge, you need more partnerships and more access to information and understanding how you can function there. So we've got our next speaker coming through and uh, her name is Lindy Makamo. And she's a manager, product and propositions at APSA. And she has a bachelor of philosophy in honors in marketing management from IMM. And she has over the last 15 years held various roles in the banking industry. She has spent nine years um, in the product management across the corporate investment banking space, as well as the retail segments. Lindy shares the key advantages of being in a stock fell. So the good thing about all our speakers is they are stock fellers. They live, breathe, and know the power of the stock fell. Um, so they, they, they're speaking from experience. She talks about 
how we can save and ways to save in challenging times and shows us the banking solutions around stock files. And the usual um, question, which is going to come, whether you like it or not, Lindy, is why can't we get better interest rates for our, our stock file bank accounts? And what's the evolution in your space? And what solutions can we look forward to as stock fellers? Lindy, over to you. Thanks, Gerald. Um, Hi everyone, uh, Sanbonani, uh, my name is Lindy Makamu, I'm from APSA. Uh, just a bit of background about myself, I grew up in a Zulu speaking household, I then got married to a Tsonga family. Um, I was fortunate enough to have grown up in Soweto, where you know the, the variety in, in the language spoken is quite vast. Uh, and why am I telling you this? Uh, it's because this year's uh, theme for our July Savings Month um, encourages um, us to save in our own languages. Um, what does saving in your own language mean? It can simply meaning, I mean that, you know, saving in your language in a literal way, uh, where you understand what saving in your language means to you. But it can also mean that, um, you understand uh, what your savings behavior and your patterns and your preferences are when it comes to, to saving. So those can differ from uh, person to person. Um, you know, for me or for somebody else, it can be opening a bank account. So your normal savings bank account. But for somebody else, it can mean that um, you just want to pay a little bit extra and take advantage of the low interest um, rate cycle and pay extra um, on your debt. Or it can simply mean that you are putting your five rand coin into a two liter bottle. So whatever that language um, means um, for you. But I think another language is saving in a stock fell. Um, that's a language on its own. Um, so that takes us to, you know, the. The first topic that I want to discuss with you, which is the advantages um, of um, saving in a stock fund. So what does that mean? I think as people, we have uh, different objectives uh, for joining a stock fund. Um, I think what's important is that most, most people um, have um, a common goal, right? So um, you have, um, it's a sense of, I think a common goal, but I think belonging to a stock fell for most people is that sense of community, sense of um, socializing. So stock fell offer this, um, you know, as a benefit, but also it affords its members um, to save in a disciplined way. So you find that some of us, you know, I'm not really disciplined. When I open a bank account, I contribute, but I don't make those regular you know, commitments. But belonging to a stock file, then you have people who will sort of you know, uh, encourage you, uh, even those times when you feel like, oh, you know what, this month maybe, let me buy that pair of shoes. Let me not put that 100 rand that I normally put in my bank account. So you'll find that those people that you share this common goal with, um, which is your stock file members, they will support you and they will motivate you because you share you share that you know the, that that's that common goal, um, and I think it's because generally stock files um, you know is built on on trust and it's built on commitment. So once you belong to a stock file, you don't want to be disappointing your fellow members. So you commit, um, and because you know that your fellow members trust you, so you don't want to disappoint them. So another added uh, advantage for saving in a stock fell is that members of a stock fell, they get to benefit in the, um, in the compound interest um, on their collective saving. So compound interest simply means that, you know, you put in a hundred rent today, you get the 10 rent um, as an interest um, and at the end of the month, but the following month, you will get interest on the 110 rent that you had saved. So imagine if you are a stock fell, there's 10 of you and each one of you collects 100 rent. So instead of you getting 
um, interest on your own 100 grand, you are getting interest on the collective um, deposits that you made at your, on your stock files. So going to my next topic, which is now you've know, you've, you know the, the goal, you know your language, you want to belong to a stock cell. What is it that you have to look for, you know, when picking that stock cell, when joining a stock cell? So you can join an existing stock cell, or you can look for people that you really trust and you can, you know, start a stock cell with those people. So what is it that you need to look for then in a stock cell? I think the trick is to look for people that you share common goals with, uh, people that you trust. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot of people. You can start a stock file with a partner because when we talk about stock files, we don't really mean a group of people. It can be families, it can be a friend, it can be a community. So, you know, go what you, with what you feel comfortable and safe with. So if it's your partner or your friend or, you know, a group of friends that you feel comfortable with um, and trust, you can, you can start a stock file with those people. As I said, it doesn't have to be a lot of people. Um, what, what is important is that you need to, to define your goal. I think that's important because once you've defined your goal and you talk to the next person and you tend to understand their goal as well, so you, you might find alignment and those people are quite easy to you know, team up with and start um, you know, contributing towards your stock file. So you define your goal, you, um, you start saving, but most importantly, you must commit. So commitment, commitment goes a long way because you know, there's always, um, uh, people are, have always good intentions but you know, when it comes to commitment, you contribute once, twice, and then you slack. So the most important thing is to commit to your goal. So it's never too late to start your investment and your, 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 and your, 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 your deposits. So the amount of how much you want to start your stock file with, it's never too little. Um, as an example, at APSA, we have your uh, products for stock files, that starts from as little as 50 rand. So no amount of money is, is, is too little. So you can start with a, a 50 rand, you can start with a thousand rand. It really depends on you and your affordability and your goal as, um, as a Stockfell um, members. Um, so important to, um, to do that. So take that first step towards building your savings culture make your regular contributions. It's important to make your regular contributions. Um, you know, I think that you, you need, because sometimes you tell yourself that I will deposit every month, but if you haven't made that conscious decision, like signing up for a debit order as an example, it's easy to fail back on. So encourage you to really sign up for that debit order because you know that you, you know, you're safe. Um, you then you 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 progress from there. So you it's a goal. You commit. You do your regular contributions. And you sign up for your for your debit order, and then you progress from there. So you'll see that you know as you get used to contributing every month, you find that it's, it it gets easier, and you feel that you want to also increase your contribution because you can see the value of what savings um is doing for you. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about um, this afternoon is how is it that we continue or to even start saving in these tough economic environments um, we find ourselves in? Uh, we often get that question, um, you know, as, as, as a bank to say, you know, how do you really want to start doing this? And, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a valid question. It's a valid question. We can all appreciate the, 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 the tough economic times that we find ourselves in, um, but we, we also want to encourage those that can start or the, those that can continue, especially when you still you know, 
have um, have a, have a job, we have a, a, a regular income. You know, start. It doesn't have to be a lot of money. Continue. Um, you know, there are people where it's valid reasons where they cannot save, but we really encourage those that can save to continue to do that. Uh, because really, if there's one thing that this pandemic has taught us, you know, it's the importance of having that savings buffer in terms of, you know, falling back on because suddenly you find people that are losing their jobs and, you know, a person hasn't, doesn't have anything to fall, fall back on because they were never saving. Um, so it, if there's one thing that we need to take away from this pandemic is to really uh, be deliberate about making sure that, you know, we save. Um, so the, I think that the, the trick also comes into play where we, we must make sure that, you know, saving is part of, of our budget. Don't spend and say, you know, whatever that's left, I'll, I'll save it. Because then, to be quite honest, nothing gets left. So our, you know, expenses um, are a lot. So if you make your savings to be part of your budget, make sure that, you know, when you count your expenses, you know, a hundred rand or 500 rand or whatever the amount is, is included in your budget so that you make sure that, you know, it's part of the, of the saving. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, um, you know, just latch on, on, on the, the tough environment that we find ourselves in, which is, you know, mostly, you know, this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and as we know that stock files, their language is really to doing it together. Um, they enjoy, you know, the, 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 the socializing part of it, you know, as much as, you know, they are saving, but they enjoy to, um, to, to, to get together, to see each other, um, you know, contribute and just make an event out of that meeting with your, with your members. But unfortunately, the world has, set, has changed so much in the last year. So the fun and great times, you know, that we used to have at our monthly Stockholm meet, meetings have come to a halt uh, It's a reality. Uh, as members of Stockfiles, we then have to, you know, have the, find another way of making sure that we still continue. Um, so, but what does this mean as we navigate the scary and lonely time brought on us by the pandemic? Um, we have to learn to love, to grieve, and to support each other from a safe distance. Uh, the question then is how do we learn a new language of doing uh, things as Stockfiles members in order to ensure that our friends and family are kept safe? Uh, but how do us, as, as your banking partner, also support you to make sure that you know you 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 are safe. You continue to do what you you love, but in a safe um, way. So until we get together again, we'll need to trust and learn to rely on technology to keep us safe. So APSA has a variety of products uh, suited for stock files and families, uh, and that depends on you know their savings needs and goals. Um, so we have, you know, uh, solutions like your grocery um, stock file, your investment stock file. If you are a stock file that wants to travel, we have your travel club. So we do have a variety of, of the stock file um, solutions for you. But again, those um, accounts, they need to be maintained, they need to be serviced. Uh, with your safety in mind, we are also um, proud to offer our stockholders the ability to bank and interact from the safety of their homes, but also very importantly, to save on cash transaction fees because that is a sore point for stockholders. Uh, because of the, the nature of, you know, they are transacting and servicing because it's, um, they deal a lot with the bulk um, deposits. And we know that when you, you know, the, the, the more you deposit in a, in a, in a branch, the higher the, the transaction fee are. But we have the solutions where 
the stock fell, uh, Palisa earlier on spoke about, you know, the digitizing of stock fells. So we do have those solutions um, in APSA where stock fells um, can transact um, digitally. So we invite stock fells um, to, to join the hundreds of groups that have registered for uh, stock fells, uh, for, for their stock fells for APSA online banking. And uh, they're doing all these transactions um, at their fingertips. So there's quite a number of activities that the stock fells can do without actually going to the branch so that they are kept safe and they save on fees. So they, as an example, um, they can do their payouts anywhere, anytime without having to carry the large amount of cash. So we also, um, I think it's first pilot that touched on this earlier on, uh, the scams around stock files, but again, just the crime you know, associated with the stock files. We know that November, December, is a season for stock fells. And um, thugs are not sleeping. They know the patterns, they know the trends. So they look out for these group of people who go to the branches and um, we draw the large amount of cash. When they go out of the branches, they get marked and all that money you've been saving for the whole year gets taken away from you just like that. So we really do encourage stock fell stock files to use our digital channels, to use these um, uh, channels uh, like APSA um, online to perform these transactions. So you can pay your other members, um, you know, using your EFT. You can even track your, your member country, um, your members contributions. Um, if there's three of you in a stock fall to make sure that we've all contributed, you can check your statements, your balances, online, no need to, to go to, to the branch. Um, so also stock files um, are also making millions of rents um, in deposits through um, our APSA ATMs. So that's, um, that's quicker, you go to the ATM if you, you feel that maybe you don't have, um, you don't have um, internet, you can do your, um, your, your deposits on, 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 on our ATMs, so it's easier. So we really do encourage our, our customers and our stock, the stock files in general to start using these banking solutions. So I think in my parting um, ways with you, I just want to tell you that remember it's never too late to change your financial journey. Uh, make the simple changes and celebrate the small achievements. Thank you so much, Nyabong. Thank you very much, Lindy. And, um... You did touch on quite a bit around banking. There's a, quite a few questions which are coming through. So with the other panelists, we'll address them as we go along. Um, just trying to find a question which was around banking, which um, perhaps you can look at. Um, okay, we have a pro, this is from Moshlodi, Rama Ramorshatli. And she's saying we have a problem with financial advisors um, who only advise people on products of their interest or, or scope. They won't broaden our knowledge or uh, refer to other experts. What do we do um, from the, she's saying, can, I have, can we get direction from the bank? So if I walk into a branch and the, that financial advisor only wants one thing that they know about, what do we do to solve that situation? situation rather? Um, Lindy Aluam Mahonga is saying, Lindy, what is the minimum number of members required for an APSA Stockfell account? And um, Patience, uh, Makoni, Patience Makoni is saying, please advise, I'm looking for property and investment Stockfells. If I go to APSA, will they give me any suggestions? And then um, the last one for APSA for now is, how does APSA assist clients who are not in South Africa, who cannot... Um, travel to open bank accounts during the pandemic. So clearly we've got um, some international participants. There's 164 people um, currently in our webinar. So I will acknowledge each and every one of you. Um, Lynn Delois said, how many members for an APSA Stockfell account? Patience wants to know, where can I find a Stockfell? And Maflodi is saying, financial advisors are not giving us inform enough information if they don't know a, a lot. And lastly, um, Malcolm is saying, um, can you assist me if I'm not in South Africa? 
or perhaps they're an APSA client who's not in South Africa because APSA is an African bank. Yeah, so I'll start with Matlodi around the financial advisor piece. So we, we um, with our products, with our banking products um, for, for stock files, they're mainly for informal um, stock files, but not informal in a sense of, you know, they are banking informally. The informal in a sense that they don't have to be, you know, registered uh, through uh, the SIPs. So if you go to any APSA branch, you don't have to see a financial advisor. We do train our um, uh, frontline staff about the vast um, products that we have and, you know, the, the, the reason for, for each product. So, you know, if you go to our APSA branch and you clearly communicate with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with our colleagues in terms of what is it exactly that you are saving for, they are able to assist you. But I think um, maybe if I can just link that question, there was a question around the property stock sell as well. So as I've mentioned that we, we, we offer them, you know, the, the simple products, if I can call it that way. So, but we do have, because we are obviously a, a big bank, although we look after the, the retail side of it and the informal stock fell, but we find stock fell that um, have, you know, saved up because our products mainly are used as a conduit to, you know, save for, 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 for better um, or, or long-term investments. So we, we do have, um, our colleague from a, a APSA Business Bank point, point of view, what we find that the retail has saved up, saved up enough and they want now to move into um, more uh, bigger things like buying a, a stock for property. So we do facilitate that process um, between us and Business Bank. Uh, so if you go to any APSA branch, um, you should be able to have a, a consultant um, helping you in that regard. Um, there was another question around the minimum members to open a stock file. We currently, um, the minimum is three, uh, but we are currently working on our um, process to allow for minimum of two, because as I said earlier on, we also want to allow families to be able to, to open up stock files. So that's coming up soon, but currently it's three, but we are going to drop it to, um, to a minimum of, of two. Uh, the last question was on outside of- Someone outside South Africa. I think the, maybe an APSA client in the rest of Africa who wants access to stock file solutions. Unfortunately, we, are, we, we open stock files um, accounts in SA only for now. But the reason is that we just want to make sure that you know it, it's working properly and all the enhancements that we're working on are implemented and you know we monitor the, 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 the progress before we can open it up in the rest of, of other African countries. Because but it's question, something uh, we are working on as, as, so as yeah, a also Makala um, from Lesotho was asking that question as well that she, can Lesotho um, get access to Stockfell accounts in South Africa. Last one, before we move on to our next speaker, all your questions will be addressed. Um, some of them, we're answering them directly and some will be answered live. Um, after the next speaker, uh, Prem, please be ready to answer your question. Um, but the last question for APSA is, can Stockfells borrow? It, it's all good and square asking the Stockfells or banking with a bank. <laughs> can a Stockfell get access to credits? Can it borrow? And this question was coming, it's come through um, on, on the questions as well. Um, yeah, so unfortunately not currently, uh, Gerald. So we are encouraging, uh, you know, the savings part of it uh, for now. So we haven't extended, as you know, that stock files are regulated uh, and, you know, it comes down to, you know, who, who carries the liability. But it's something that, you know, I think all banks are, are looking at because we've had, you know, these types of question and, you know, the ambition for stock falls to start borrowing. But for now, we are encouraging the savings part because, you know, as we, we more and more, we see that, um, you know, um, it, it, it's much better if stock falls, they contribute as a collective 
to be able to, you know, to invest in, in, in those type of things like a property so that they can make income for themselves. But um, just to answer you, not currently. Okay. Abigail Ndlovu, we see you. Akonao, um, Alicia Moses, you're there, we see you. Anelisa, we see you. Um, Ali, um, who else is on the group? We've got um, Babalwa, Toise, Barbara, Muzambi, um, Beatrice Banda, uh, Bobo, uh, Boitumelo, Boniswe, Boniswe, Bulelwa, Usisiwen. Um, we see you all. Um, please send your questions, participate. This webinar is all about us. And remember, it's about saving in our languages. And if you would like to ask your question live and like us to open the, the screen or the mic so you can ask live, please just make a note in your message. But for now, we're going to go into a speaker who's already receiving questions and hopefully we'll answer most of his questions around um, the Stockfeller app. We've got Sepo Molloy and he's the CEO of Stockfeller. Now, we're excited to have him because Stockfeller is going to talk about the digital side of Stockfells. Um, Sepo founded Stockfeller, a fintech solution that is aimed at revolutionizing a 19th century practice into the modern era. And it allows more than 8.5 million South Africans to use or at participate in this digital revolution. Sepo has seven years experience in the financial industry and a further two years in mining consulting. Stockfeller was born on his personal journey, trying to solve the admin challenges he faced in managing his stock fell. It was also inspired by being part of a 20 year old family stock fell in Soweto where he grew up. He shares his insights from the Stockfeller system and what it can help you achieve and what it can do. Um, essentially Stockfeller, I remember I saw it a few years ago, it's an app and it's kind of, it allows everyone to see when you make deposits, um, everyone can see the deposits. There's no treasurer who can disappear and um, make a run with your money at Christmas. Um, but Sebo, please explain Stockfeller. There's a whole lot of questions. People are interested. They want to know how safe is Stockfeller? Is it legit? Tell us everything you know and everything you can share around the digital Stockfell revolution. Sebo, over to you. Thank you, Gerard. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so excited to be here. Um, I'm going to share a presentation with you guys that I've pre that I've pre prepared, and uh, so <clears throat> so I'm just going to touch on the future of stock files, basically, or the future savvy stock file digitally, and I'm going to bring you into a feel of what it looks like and 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 what do they do and what what we call a successful future savvy digital stock file. But before you know, we talk about future digital stock file, we need to understand what is a digital stock file. And, and with that regards, we almost need to start backwards, right? And understand how a typical stock file function. I think my, my colleagues have already touched on that before we touch on how digital stock file functions. So um, during COVID, when COVID started, we actually released an article around um, joining a stock file before COVID. Basically it runs as some of my colleagues have, have, have touched on. You guys meet physically, you attend a meeting physically, you take out money physically, you walk into a, a branch or so physically, um, you contribute regularly physically and you socialize, you know, Lejeti Papa seven colors. When I grew up um, with my family stock for, I think I looked forward to just seven colors more than anything else. And of course you would draw it um, physically, that cash, and then like share it physically. And that's where all these challenges face around um, security issues come into place, you know? So this is an article we wrote when COVID started and we said, this is how stock files looked before COVID. You know, if you kept your stock file and this is in that way, this is how the pandemic actually impacted you from that point of view. If you decided I'm not gonna go digital or I'm gonna go partially digital because you could not meet physically. Uh, most people joined the stock file via WhatsApp you know, I, I think everyone got to know about this infamous um, not okay stock file called the WhatsApp stock file. Um, but most people engage via WhatsApp. They start engaging Zoom as we're engaging Zoom today, um, you know, and, and, and platforms like Teams as well. But unfortunately, because uh, we, it was hard to hard, hard lock lockdown, we could not contribute physically cash, it's, it's especially if you decided to loan about it's a cash directly. 
Um, you cannot have those social seven colors. You know, I, I know that for a good that 24, 24 days, I never went home. So therefore I never got to uh, experience some seven colors from my grandma, um, you know, and then of course you can't share the money cash physically because of that. But if you are a digital stock fell, especially if you're a digital stock fell stock fella, not only do you guys can engage via WhatsApp and Teams and Zoom, um, you also can start contributing digitally. So on Stockfeller, you can contribute digitally. Uh, you can contribute using your, your, your APSA app. As an example, you know, you pay into your Stockfeller. Um, you can, and what you've contributed, you can see all those payments and you can access this via your, your computer or via your, um, your smartphone or via any web enabled phone, meaning phone that you can enable, that, that you can access Google or internet on. And of course you can um, pay each other digitally basically pay to teach other through your own, <clears throat> excuse me, to your own um, uh, EFT via EFT to your own bank account. If you're banking with apps are great, uh, pay yourself um, via a, a wallet um, and then withdraw that money from an upside ATM. So you can do all these things um, um, digitally, making you a hundred percent digital social um, distance stock file. And, and, and so even more important right now during this, this, this challenging time, if you find ourselves, it, in with the pandemic and with all the, the, the challenges that are happening currently the past few days, that you can actually do this all digitally. Now, understanding that that's a digital stock file, how does it look like from the landscape? So what's the landscape of digital stock files that, that, that we have on Stockfile and that, that's out there in the market basically. So to, to do this, I've prepared some sort of analytics to touch on. And I think um, I was probably touching a bit of the old stock file. So it's sort of looking like something like this. First of all, you can't be a digital stock file if you're not using some sort of a device, right? So most stock file, uh, digital stock file use the mobile, meaning they're using their smartphone uh, or their web enabled phone to access um, their stock file basically digitally, you know, and, and a bit on their computer. Um, um, if they if they have a computer, if you're lucky enough, but this explains to you that that's why there's a there's a high penetration of um, SIM cards in South Africa, um, or should I say at least uh, smartphones um, in South Africa. Therefore, people can access all this via their smartphone. And then, of course, um, you know, uh, the, the, the average age amongst the females is, is 37 years old and amongst the males is slightly one year younger than that. Um, just shows you that, um, you know, stock falls, as, as my colleague Balisa touched on, is actually particularly this digital side of it is actually for the for the for, for those that are young and upcoming um, um, individuals with a bit of a, a high LSM, not only your from your for, for your old individual. Not to say that the old individual can't use stock files. I mean, on our platform as stock filler, the oldest individual we have is about 69 years old, basically. So it is possible if you are if you're an old person to use the digital. All you have to do sometimes is just ask for help. And, and with stock filler, we do have a helpline that can help you to, to process all of this thing information. Now, of course, uh, what are the most popular stock files? Um, my colleagues have touched on a bit, and it's the same thing in digital. Their number one is, is investment stock files, then come your business stock files, then come your savings stock files, and your property stock files. These are your top stock files um, in according to percentage. And of course, there's other. If you just look at, if you just calculate the percentage there, of course, you'll see that there's other which I did not put there, basically. But these are your leading digital stock files that actually are taking over um, from a digital perspective. And of course, um, these digital stock files, if we then just look at, you know, where are they mostly based? Uh, most of them are based in Gauteng. Uh, this is where um, Stockfell is also based. And of course, in Western Cape and KwaZulu-Natal. But if you look at, if you look at research, um, and specifically or from a physical stock files, yes, some of them are still based in Gauteng, but your number two is actually Limpopo. So it just shows you the, the impact of infrastructure um, when it comes to digital stock files or when it comes to access to internet or when it comes to um, affordability, how it impacts your access to digital from a digital stock file perspective. Having understood that, um, you know, how does a successful digital stock file look like? Because you can't claim your digital stock file and, and, and not channel your words towards a successful stock file. And, and to do this, um, you know, I've picked, a, I've nitpicked two um, most popular stock files on our platform, one of, or should I say a couple of popular stock files um, on, on our platform, you know, so the first one is, uh, my, funny enough, my colleague, Palisa touched on this one, is the third money franchise stock file there, and is run by a good friend of mine called Slevo Homelefe. This stock file started um, um, during the pandemic, believe it or not, and through that time um, to date, 
they've raised uh, 4 million rand and have bought two stock files. You know, but what is very sad that <laughs> the last stock file they just bought, which they launched in middle point, unfortunately got, um, got looted. So they have to redo the work again. But the nice thing is that there's a hundred of them as a community who bought this. So that everyone is pitching to say, how do we get our stock file back up? Imagine if you are the only individual that owned that franchise store, right? You would be very challenged in terms of saying, okay, what do I do next, basically? But these type of stock files, what we call them successful, is that they change the narrative. They don't just do burials only, you know? So they go for something that's very difficult, that has not been done before, and they use the means that they are there, basically. The next very popular stock file, one of our popular stock files is it's that what makes them good is that they, they are investment, they, they, they invest to win. Right. This is one of our, our, our biggest property stock file called Sakisizo property stock file, run also by a very powerful lady called Lindile. And you know, by using Stockfeller, they won the best um, innovative uh, South African property um, uh, uh, awards, basically. Right. To date, um, again, they launched in um, 2019, and to date, they've, they've raised 12 million rand through the Stockfeller platform. Invested in properties in Cape Town, in Durban, in Joburg, you know, and they and their members are getting good yields because they're very smart. And Slinila herself. Uh, is an MBA student and she's got very good, good, good property um, um, skills to go with it. And, and, and touching on skills um, around it. So what makes a great digital stock fall? Because, you know, you, you now know, you know, what does a digital stock fall look like and how does it um, become successful or what the success of it looks like? Now, what makes it great? You know, what are those two things or three things that makes it great. I've, I've selected the top two that I know that most are very powerful that we usually coach our stock files on um, around it. In fact, to say, this is what will make you great. So when you're a stock file that comes to Stockfeller, we actually walk the journey with you. So one of them is actually seeking knowledge and getting coaching. You know, um, so Slini herself is a coach. She's a property stock file coach. Um, we usually pull her in. If you come to us and say, "Look, we are interested in uh, in becoming a property stock for," we pull, we'll pull, we'll pull one of our property coaches. She's one of them. Um, or if you're saying, "Look," Um, I'm interested in understanding finance and governance of stock file. Um, we'll pull Palisa along. I see she's there. So make, becoming a coach um, is one of the, or having a coach in your stock file to walk the journey with you is one of the most important things because they already know the pitfalls. They already know the challenges. They've been down the road, these individuals. So they will help you to navigate and get your goal much more quicker than you starting on your own. This is one of the advantages of being a digital stock file because as stock file, we pick up this data quite easily you know, and able to match stock file to stock file, basically, when you come through to us. And of course, um, stock file collaborate with one another. These are the, the three stock files I choose from. So these stock files, for example, the tracking stock file that we have on Stockfeller recently started. This is the collaboration between two stock files on the platform that engage one another that we put together because we found that they got strong leadership. So we pull them together, we combine them and said, look, uh, this is what you guys, we think we, you can do. And they formed the tracking stock file. We have another stock file that called the, uh, the JV Butchery stock file. They, again, they're collaborating. It's two or three different stock files come together. One of the members um, owns, a butcher, owns a butchery and owns a farm. And uh, now they're contributing towards that, getting great yields. They pay out every six months. I think their yields about 10% um, every six months. And one of my favorites is very close to my heart. Um, it's called the Masedi um, Education Stockfall. This stockfall, again, was from two or three stockfalls that pulled together on Stockfeller, and they actually built a school out in Limpopo, right? And of course, um, they're getting income from that school. The children, that um, the parents that are renting out the rooms for those schools are paying out, and, and it's such a great, great initiative. So they collaborate, they work with one another, they change the narrative, and this is the kind of digital stockfalls that we like to build for the future. And lastly, but not least, me, um, they use a simple innovative app called Stockfella, of course, um, that does this all this amazing work for them, con removes all the admin, removes all the headache, and they have a great team behind called Stockfella team that can they can call and that they will guide them through the process. Basically, this is what makes um, a digital stock for, this is what a digital stock for looks like, become successful um, and, and change the narrative of the country. Yeah, thank you very much. So, so, but thank you for that one. I think there's a few questions. Um, I think what I'm finding is a lot of people who are in here um, are basically asking, they're interested in Ama Stock Fail. And as much as we've been speaking about how Stock Fails are about community, 
and you like you want to start a stock fair with your friends and with your family a lot of people just don't have access to friends and family maybe who are active in the stock fair movement um a few questions coming through are, are how can i find a stock fair and that presents a challenge in itself because you know we are saying stock fairs are about community and people you know but are, is there a way of accessing a stock fair um using the the stock fair app and joining it and how secure is that yeah, thanks for the question. So one of the things that we do as Stockfeller, depending on the type of Stockfell, we actually vet the Stockfells. So if your Stockfell starts to become very aggressive, as in it starts to have a lot of members, um, starting to save a lot of money, we actually do a bit of vetting along those Stockfells, you know. And funny you're asking this, this, this question is that um, one of the things we do quarterly, we release our quarterly top 10 Stockfells. And these stock files, we usually look at how they behave, how they work, who are the members, who are the executives, and slightly do a bit of vetting. So that, that can actually give you an idea where to look um, um, on the stock. File. That, that top 10 of that we release quarterly is available on our website via our blog. Um, that's how you would know. And this, those stock files usually recruit around the country um, uh, and, and any member can join. Um, and, and one of the things that we do as Stockfeller is that if they are project based, let's take, for example, the third money franchise Stockfell, we would make sure or we would very look that every time a claim is made or a payment is made out is actually made towards the goal itself. So we will monitor such things as Stockfeller to make sure that the money goes to where the money should be. And of course, when the returns come through, they go to exactly to the members. So yeah, that's 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 the part that we play in terms of trying to assist this whole challenge of joining a Stockfell that you don't know. But of course, that does not mean that you must not do your DD, um, your due diligence as, as a person. You must still do your due diligence, uh, check the members out. I think the CIPC information, you can Google the person, checked on LinkedIn, check their Facebook profile. You can do a lot of things um, um, as an individual online just to see if this person is actually legit um, from that point of view. There's a question here from Yoliswa. Does Stockfeller charge a monthly interest like the banks? So is there an admin fee for using the Stockfeller app? And how much is it? And our other questions, how do I find a legit stock fail? A lot of people want a stock fail. And I think that's something really we need to look at. Um, Tsepo, is your app accessible in other countries, Lesotho in particular? Um, quite interesting um, because your app brings um, transparency. And what else do we have here? Tsepo, what, what a lot of good nuggets and um, Yes, so let, let's try that one. Stockfelder app in Lesotho, um, is it possible? How much do you charge to use the app? Yeah, no, thanks for the questions. Um, those are very, very questions, of course. So Stockfeller is available in, in, in currently in South Africa, in Lesotho, in Swaziland, in Namibia. If you would know why, those are what we call CMA countries. Um, they share common money, a monetary um, agreement, which means the tender is actually the same. <laughs> From that point of view, so yes, uh, Stockfell is available in those countries. You can access the the platform. Um, from a point of view of do we charge? Yes, we charge. So we charge. Um, so a, per transaction that comes on the platform. Um, so in money in money out is a pay as you go um, platform basic. Okay, thank you on that one. Um, so we've got a few of our panelists who have nominated to answer some questions. Lindy, um, the questions you have said um, you're addressing. Please pick those up. And then after that, we'll go over to our chairperson, um, Prem, who also nominated to answer one or two questions. And Tsepo will be coming back to you, um, just letting Lindy pick up those questions. You're muted, Lindy. Um, there's a few questions you said you wanted to answer. Um, I think I answered all the questions that you did pose to me. And I'm busy answering the ones on the Q&A currently. Okay, so you're answering them on the Q&A directly. Um, yeah. Prem, did you want to answer your question live? And is anyone in the, in the webinar wanting to speak to us live and ask a question live? Um, sorry, Gerald. Sorry, Gerald, it's me again. Yeah. I think the one, the one uh, common question maybe I need to address here was around the monthly fees on stock files. So we don't charge, uh, Upside doesn't charge a monthly um, fee uh, for stock files. 
You do, however, pay the, um, the transaction fee. So every time you go to the branch and you transact, hence I think earlier on, I did highlight the importance of transacting digitally because essentially you might end up banking for free because we don't have the monthly fee. And if you do all your transaction online, uh, you don't have to pay. Thank you for that. Um, Prem, are you in the, are you uh, around to answer the question? Yes, Gerald. Now, I was, I, the, the question that I would have, that I want to answer is, you know, is, is our stock fails just for the marginalized? I don't think so. I think, I think it, it has a place. It has a very valid place from everything that I've heard today. And I think, um, you know, you, if, if one is serious about saving, um, and one wants to kind of, um, you know, be involved in a few different aspects of saving. Um, it's, it's, it's a good mix to have, you know, you use your financial institutions and you use your stock pills as well, because saving is not just for one thing. And if you save, if you're saving for different things, I think different products will give you um, the, the correct balance, more, basically, or, um, you know, kind of separates the issues, kind of separates the issues. And then again, you know, you're not having all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. So I think it has a very um, big place in, in, in our whole savings basket. And it's something that we should all consider. In fact, I never really looked at it um, seriously, simply because I didn't have the kind of information that I have today. But having this information really, really makes me, um, you know, makes me think that this is definitely, it's not an alternative. I think it is a, um, it, it, it can sit side by side with our formal products. Thank you. Thank you for that, Prem. Now, there's a lot of questions around how can I get more education? Uh, more information around stock fails. And Palisa, um, obviously I'm putting a link on the answers to Palisa's book, which you can buy. Also, I've got a book which I wrote uh, two, three years ago, which has quite a lot of information around stock fails. That's how I got to know Palisa as well. So with the knowledge part, I would say there are a few books out there. Try and buy them through the links which are there and let's see if you can increase your knowledge from there because they have instructions on setting up your own stock fails, how to draft your own constitution. And some of the questions, for example, uh, I'm looking at a question here is how is it easy for how easy is it for the for it to devolve shares for a loved one from a, for a stock fail. So if someone is in a stock fail and they die, how do you get their shares back? And these are some of the things which um, I know I addressed at least in one chapter where once you start talking stock fail constitution, you need to really realize there are certain things that are fundamental when you're talking your stock fail. For a start, every stock fail is supposed to have a goal. And by a goal, we're saying it has to have a target. Now, one of the mistakes a lot of stock fails make is that they say forever and they never stop saving, which is great. But what you need to do is you have to have a goal to say in two years, we want 1 million rand. And your constitution is clear that when we get a million rand, we distribute the profits with interest to all the members. And then after you reach your goal, you set another goal and say, okay, we haven't had enough, we want some more. Let's increase the target. So first thing your stock fell is supposed to have an ever present goal. You are aiming for something. When you reach it, you sit down and you say, do you want to move forward? Also, by setting goals, you also see who's interested in certain things. Because in stock fails, for example, if you start when you are young, some of you are doing better in life, you want to contribute more. So you don't necessarily need to start uh, leave the group. You can start another group which you do your own thing, but you still stay in the original group. Because the whole purpose of this stock fail is to stay you know, as a community, you want to stay as friends. So there's no point in us saying, no, Tina, we are making money. No, it's about saying the ones who are doing better in life, start your own stock fail. I've got a question for Palisa here. Um, property, how have you seen or experienced a stock fail successfully buying a property? Because that could be very tricky in whose name is the property? How does it work um, in terms of buying a property as a stock fail? Palissa, are you there? 
Um, if you can just address that, if you've seen it in real life, because you're on the streets, you're on the ground, you see it. Um, <coughs> is it possible to buy Inglu? And is it possible to buy 10 houses? How do you do it? And, and what's the model? Because this is the real knowledge which people want to know uh, in terms yeah. of um, stock fails. Palisa, to you. Thank you very much. Um, there's a very big interest around property stock fails, and there's also been such misinformation uh, that has been out there in terms of how you can really make a uh, property stock fail work for its members and in terms of uh, the background documentation of it. So, um, and I'm talking this from experience. Um, as you know, Gerald, I'm a stock filler myself. So I belong in about six stock fills and property stock fill is one of them. So, um, and uh, doing it uh, uh, legitimately is very important. And, but most importantly, as I touched in my, in, in, in my presentation, if you are going to get into acquiring assets as a stock fell, you are going to have to formalize um, uh, the easiest way is to formalize into a legal entity, which is either a company or a trust or a cooperative in order to be able to acquire that property, then you know that property is under that legal entity which that legal entity, um, uh, the shareholders are the stock fall members then. So it's typically with an example that I'm, uh, that I'm part of is um, the, the, the stock fell has a trust. Uh, a trust is the one that um, that is um, that is that owns this property, and the trustees and the beneficiaries uh, are the members. So that is typically how you would be a, uh, you would be running a legitimate. Um, uh, a, a, a property stock fell. There's usually a legal entity assisting to acquire that uh, that property, and the members are either shareholders or, 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 or trustees or beneficiaries of that. Of course, these things you are you gonna have to uh, to consult with lawyers and and an and expert in those fields to be able to assist you. So if you're gonna be buying a such things as serious of an asset as property, uh, you have to consult expert to assist you with that. And that is how the process uh, you, can, you can go about. I think you've touched on an important point, which I also cover in my book, which is stock fellows must not be afraid to engage professionals. Um, if you have to hire someone, get someone who has a good reputation, who a financial planning professional who you've got um, history on, you've done due diligence, hire them and pay them for the service to know what you need to do. Um, especially once you start talking more complex assets. Now, the question was, I never answered in terms of what happens if someone dies. Your constitution needs to have those things in it. In terms of saying, if someone dies, if someone leaves, if someone stops paying, how do we compensate them? You can't simply have a rule which says that, walala wasala, no. It doesn't work like that because it's people's money. So if I've been contributing three years and hardship comes my way, you can't tell me I walk away from three years contribution. Those are the things which you need to find in your constitution. I've put a link up for a basic constitution, but the more your the more complex your stock fell, if you're not just buying groceries, you need to have answer all those questions, divorce, death. Some stock fells end up taking a, I'm a life policy on each other, um, funeral policies, how do we do that? Now, a question for Lindy is, um, we've got gogos um, who are not keen on online. They don't have uh, WhatsApp and uh, cell phones and, and apps. Um, can they still visit the branch to transact um, around their stock fell? Um, this is from Maselepe. And also the, the other question um, was around in terms of um, what do you need to start a Stockfell account? I think that's been answered. If you look at the questions, Pumla answered the questions in terms of what you need to, to do to open an APSA account. But for now, Abo Gogo, who want to transact, are you, are you closing branches? Uh, can Gogo still go to the branch and do her transaction? And Lindy? Um, of course, Gerald, um, you know, we, we, we cater for, we understand that in the, in the stock fell community, you will find uh, different pockets of your stock fells. Uh, when you talk about segmentation, you will find the ones that are younger and want to, you know, transact digitally, but you will find that, you know, there are more of your like your older generation that will prefer to go to the branch. So we still, you know, very much are catering for the branches. 
And as I said earlier on, we are even um, enhancing our processes at branches to make sure that we don't disadvantage um, the, 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 the customers that are still preferring to go to the branch. Unfortunately, we know with what's happening now, um, it's not safe to do so. Uh, so we, we do advise our customers to, you know, try not to um, go to the, to the branch if they don't have to. But in general, we, we still very much allow um, and offer those services to, to our customers um, at, at branches. Okay, so just to close off, um, because obviously we're a bit over time, Maselepe and Mfumeni is asking, you know, is it good to start a family stock fields? Stock fields are built around family, community, and friends. Um, for a lot of people, it's an excuse to meet. That's how sometimes it is for, 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 for the gents who get married, they meet every month and they just, you know, do something together. There's holiday stock fields where people are traveling and they, and they, and they, and they create memories. Um, uniform stockpiles for school uniform. You can do anything, but yes, you want a stockpile with people you know. Be very careful once you start dealing with strangers because they will come to your community in Fensica and tell you, um, this is what I'm bringing. Everyone is going to get a car next month. And those often are the pyramid and the Ponzi schemes, which end up giving stockpiles um, a, a, a bad name. Is there a registered board where you can register your stockpile? Uh, Zipper Zintle, yes, there's the Nasasa, and there's a few stockpile bodies who try and uh, monitor and try and may ensure that stockpiles are fair and at least there's a bit more transparency. Um, go through the messages, um, you'll find them there, um, the, some of the responses which you've put there, but be careful. There's a lot of pyramid schemes which are masquerading around um, as stockpiles. So, uh, we will we will answer some of the questions even after the, the 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 webinar is over. But in order to release people who got limited time and limited data, I'd like to give special thanks to our guest Palisa Lengolo, um, Tsepo, and uh, Lindy. I will give you um, each a minute just to say your parting words of advice based on what you're seeing, the questions that are coming through and uh, to encourage some of the people who have joined us this afternoon. Um, we'll start off with Sepo for now. Um, what are your parting words? Uh, how do you recommend uh, to encourage people? And another question was, how safe is the Stockfella app? Uh, what if next week I log on and Stockfella is gone and my money is also missing? Um, again, Lindy, when you get your chance, they're asking how safe are internet banking? Um, we see too many things which are not okay about internet banking as well. Um, so, Tsepo, over to you. Yeah, no thanks. Uh, just to quickly answer that question, how safe? Uh, so, all information that gets put on Stockfella is, um, is, is, is secured, uh, encrypted, uh, whether it's your banking information, your personal information. Uh, we do oblige with the new Poppy Act that has just come into place. Uh, Stockfella is also an FSP accredited company. So yeah, so you won't log in and then it goes around. Uh, just like, but just like any other company, if we do do maintenance, we will let all our members know or all our users know on the platform. As a parting shot, I think ultimately, you know, um, if there was ever time for the future of Stockfalls, it is perhaps now. Um, because Stockfalls can play a very pivotal role in changing the economy of this country and its structures, whether it's inequality, poverty, and the likes, basically. Uh, it's, it's a 15 billion rand industry. And imagine, you know, what you can do with the 15 billion rand industry. I think uh, when, when, when the pandemic started, uh, uh, the president announced almost a 15 billion rand assistance. Now that was almost the entire stock for industry, um, you know, and it's the second biggest industry after the tech industry. So imagine it was all focused and it was driving towards the change of this economy. So just think about that with your stock for, how do you do that? How do you take it to the next level, become a future stock for seven? Thanks. You're on mute. <laughs> I also got caught on the mute, eh? <laughs> you were waiting for me to just say you're on mute. I could see you were hungry to tell me that one. <laughs> um, uh, Lindy, um, your parting shots, how safe is internet banking and um, can Stockfells look forward to any developments in, in your space um, catering for them? Yeah, so maybe just to start off by saying we, 
you know, as a, as a last comment, we really encourage um, our stock files to, to, to register for internet banking. Um, you know, it's, it's cheaper, it's safer, and it saves costs. And we do as APSA offer the, the digital fraud warranty for internet banking. So really we do encourage that. Um, you know, use other channels other than the branches, you know, your ATMs. Um, so it, it's safe, it's, 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 it's economical. So we really do encourage that for our customers because, you know, that's where you start seeing the value for your money because sometimes you find that the interest rate that you're getting, it end up being eaten by, you, by the charges uh, that you spend at the branches. So please do use our internet banking um, options. Okay, so we've got another question here, which is saying, um, what happens if I, my salary goes down and I'm a member of a stock fell? or I get retrenched. Again, those are things which are very important in your, in your constitution. Um, don't go for the constitution, which is too simple, because these are real life challenges. Um, often when someone loses their salary or they want their money out and you've invested the money, you, you have to have a way of paying them back. Sometimes it's from new contributions so that you don't disturb the investment. But all those things need to be part of your constitution. Now, Palisa, I've been talking about your book, perhaps just give us a, an overview of what we can look forward to when we buy your book. And also in terms of your parting uh, comments, um, in terms of everyone who's joined us this afternoon and, um, and we will answer more questions um, if we can. Thank you, Jarrett. Um, firstly, my book, uh, you can get it at exclusive books, at buy -in books, at take a lot and all other leading bookstores is called Stock Fells, how they can make your money work for you. It's just under 200 rand. Um, it's mainly around financial education. Uh, we touch on especially Stock Fells, uh, how they can formalize, um, how to invest, the financial literacy. There's also an example of, um, of, of a budget, of constitution. So basically how to run your stock file uh, uh, successfully, but most importantly, also prepare it in order for it uh, to create wealth for its members. And then my parting shot is my favorite thing about stock files um, is not just putting money together, but it is the affordability that it affords members that wouldn't necessarily be able to, 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 to acquire things uh, or by themselves. Um, a, a member that would not necessarily be able to buy an investment property alone, for example, is able is afforded that opportunity to be able to, to, to be in a property stock fell, for example, to be able to now invest in property when you wouldn't be able to do with this. The affordability, but most importantly also um, the, the fin not only just the financial resources, but also the skills that comes with working together as different members of the stock file. The most important thing when you are stock filling, financial education, information, education, information, always. Thank you. Okay, wow, the questions are not stopping. I promise this is the last one for you, Lindy. Can you open a stock file account remotely? Um, especially now when people are sitting at home, can they open a Stockfell account um, online? Is that possible? And also Annalisa is asking, is there an insurance policy which would cover our mama, our dollar uh, who want to prefer, who prefer to go to the branch? So she's saying those people who carry cash, is there a, a policy um, to protect them? Maybe I'll ask Lindy on that one, but from my knowledge, um, you, you might need to just take out personal insurance um, if you do carry cash um, for most in short term insurance companies you'll have a policy where if you lose your personal belongings, you can make a claim but it's generally not advised to carry cash. Um, you're all recommended to please try and use the virtual channels where possible, but it's a part of the stock culture to bring the cash and you know. Um, to, to, to hit it on the table. So you, people want to see the cash. So those are the, some of the challenges we, we face. So can we open a remote internet banking uh, account, Lindy? And I promise this is your last question. Thanks, Gerald. Um, there's quite a bit of work that we are still doing as, as banks. Um, you know, we are also looking at, at that, uh, but unfortunately currently no. 
Um, it's a no and it's a yes. So it's a no if you are a new to bank customer, you don't have any stock file account with APSA. Um, unfortunately, you still have to go to the branch and open your first um, you know, account. But once you have um, you know, that initial account, we find that stock files generally, they have more than one account because they will have maybe want to have a fixed deposit where they can put lump sum and you know they they save for a term but they also want to have that instant access um you know account where for emergencies and you know for you know the, the dispersing of 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 the, the payouts and they will have you know um like an investment lab account as an example but we are saying that once you open that initial account add or to open additional stock file accounts with APSA, you can do that remotely. You don't have to go to the branch every time you want to open the account. Thank you, Lindy. Thank you, Palisa. Thank you, Tsepo, for joining us this afternoon. Last but not least, um, our chairperson, Prem Gavenda. She's a certified financial planning professional and a CA. And there was a question which we almost forgot, which was asking, do stock fails have to pay tax? Um, Prem, do stock fails have to pay tax? When do they pay tax and how? I, I think, uh, Gerald, when you talked about um, uh, appointing a professional to advise you on uh, particularly the structure of, your, of the entity that you want to form, I think you must get the best tax advice possible. We all know that um, the highest rate of tax in this country from RAND 1 is paid by trusts. So beware of that. Company tax, on the other hand, is 27%. And then from an individual perspective, remember, all interest that's earned, there is an exemption of just 23,800 if you're under 65, and that goes up to 33,800 if you're over 65. Anything over and above that is definitely subject to tax. So I, my advice would be, please get professional help before you actually embark on this. Know what you're in for, because these, this is what can trip you up at a later stage. And it's a bit difficult to undo something. Um, it, it can cost you to undo something if it's not done correctly in the first place. Thank you. So definitely, thank you on that one, Prem. Seek professional advice for your stock fail, especially once you start getting in stock fails where you're contributing big amounts. I will, let's say more than a thousand, five, two thousand a month. Those are serious amounts of money and they could have tax implications on you or the stock fail. So please seek that professional advice. We always end with good news. So there's two prize winners. A thousand rand is coming your way. And these are random winners um, based on their, their participation and uh, their names popping up. So the first one is going to Lindelwa Mahonga and Bonisiwe Mpungose. Please stay online so we can take your details or at least get in touch with you. Um, this is not the last webinar. We've got two more webinars. Next week, we're talking small business. How do you start your small business in COVID times like this? We've got Gukum Fupi and we've got um, Hillary from APSA and an extra guest coming through to talk about how you can start a business from nothing. And one of the ways to start a business from nothing is to get stock fails to invest in you. Stock fails can really be investment drivers in local communities in terms of where they invest their money instead of just lending money or, or finding other ways to do it. So definitely next week, join us for the, for the small business. And then the last webinar on the 28th, um, we will be having a Wumandla uh, seminar to celebrate um, the women in our country who are carrying the country in turbulent times right now where you know sometimes the, the breadwinners have lost their jobs or even the women themselves have lost their jobs. The house, the home has become an office. The home has become a school uh, classroom. The home is still a place where Umama needs to cook and look after her family. So we're going to have some insights from powerful women, including our very own Prem Gavenda, um, Esther, uh, who also be coming through and um, Lilani. Uh, uh, Bezentut, who, who's um, the CEO of the Financial Planning Institute, where women are taking charge and taking over and showing us how you can basically cope in these challenging, uh, in these challenging times. So I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. It's been really an informative session. It's going to be recorded and available um, on Facebook. 
and please um, participate in the in our future webinars. We really look forward to having you, Esther Mukumbo, uh, Lelani Bezentut, and uh, Prem, 28th of Feb of, of July. And then we've got Gugu and Hilary Mangwana um, next week, plus an extra surprise guest who we are we are loading for you. So please join us then, and the prizes will still be there. Uh, if you have any further questions, ways to save.co.za or simply stay online. We'll stay on for a few minutes answering questions if you have something you'd like to ask and we can try and answer that question. So finally, let's uh, thank our, our lady behind the scenes, Tamron Brown. You can play the end credits so that we can have that nice song and music so that we will make it look like a nice TV show. And basically, we'll be here for a few more minutes answering your questions. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, South Africa. Be safe, please. And hopefully, you know, the challenges we're facing as a country will subside soon. But definitely be safe. And thank you for joining us. Okay, there's no song. Tamron is no song. Okay, thank you for joining us. That's the song. Thank you for joining us. That's the song. <laughs> thank you for joining us. That's the song. Tamron, thank you for joining us. That's the song. Gerald, stick to your day job. <laughs> thank you very much, Just everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Yeah, I think we're offline. Thank gosh. Thank you, everyone. Cameron, are you there? <laughs>